APCO Educational Topic Number 51, Vulvar Neoplasms. Vulvar carcinoma accounts for 5% of all gynecologic malignancies and is the fourth most common gynecologic cancer. The symptoms can be vague and sensitive for patients to talk about. Early recognition and proper evaluation of vulvar neoplasms can reduce morbidity and mortality. The objectives of this video are to list risk factors for vulvar neoplasms, describe the symptoms and physical exam findings of a patient with a vulvar neoplasm, and lastly, list the indications for vulvar biopsy. Here is our patient, Ms. Pruritic Vulva. The mean age of diagnosis is 65. 20% of patients with vulvar cancers, however, are diagnosed at an age less than 50. There are thought to be two independent pathways for vulvar carcinogenesis. The first is related to HPV infection, and the second is related to chronic inflammatory processes. Risk factors thus include cigarette smoking, prior history of cervical cancer, vulvar or cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, lichen sclerosis, and northern European ancestry. Vulvar itching is the most common presenting complaint. Patients may notice a red or white ulcerative or exophytic lesion on the posterior two-thirds of either labia magus. Here is a photograph of an exophytic ulcerative lesion. You may remember Dr. Vulva Vagina from hits such as APCO video number 35, Vulvar and Vaginal Diseases. Dr. Vulva Vagina is comfortable asking her patients about vulvar and vaginal symptoms. Remember that many of our patients will be reluctant to speak with their physician about symptoms down there, and unfortunately many of our patients are not familiar with their female anatomy. It is very important as a women's health care provider to feel comfortable asking women about their symptoms, to perform an exam if she has symptoms, and at this point, let's briefly review vulvar anatomy. This is our patient in lithotomy. The vulva contains the labia majora, labia minora, mons pubis, clitoris, vestibule, and ducts of glands that open into the vestibule. Here are the labia majora. The labia majora are the folds of skin that contain hair follicles, as well as sebaceous and sweat glands. The labia minora are the folds of skin within the labia majora The labia minora merge anteriorly with the prepuce and frenulum of the clitoris and posteriorly with the labia majora and the perineum. The labia minora have no hair follicles but do have sebaceous and sweat glands. The vestibule is the area between the labia minora and contain the urethral meatus and the opening of the vagina which is called the vaginal introitus. The periurethral glands or Skene's ducts have an opening here, and the Bartholin's gland empties into the vestibule there. Approximately 90% of vulvar cancers are squamous cell carcinomas. These generally remain localized for long periods of time and then spread in a predictable fashion to the regional lymph nodes. Melanoma is the most common non-squamous cell carcinoma of the vulva and account for 5-10% to of primary vulvar neoplasms. Melanoma is most commonly located on the labia minora or the clitoris. It usually presents with a raised, irritated, pruritic, and pigmented lesion. If diagnosed early when confined to the intrapapillary ridge, survival approaches 100%. If the melanoma has invaded into the subcutaneous tissue, survival is generally approximately 20%. Bartholin gland carcinoma accounts for 1-2% to of vulvar cancers. The Bartholin glands have ducts that open into the vestibule at the four and 8 o'clock position on each side of the vaginal orifice. Bartholin gland carcinomas generally occur in women over age 60. However, any Bartholin gland mass in women over age 40 should be biopsied. Let's go back to Dr. Vulva Vagina. She is comfortable asking patients about vulvar symptoms and performs an exam of the vulvar region when patients are symptomatic. She knows her vulvar anatomy and she'll have a low threshold for performing a vulvar biopsy. Indications for vulvar biopsy include lesions that are clinically suspicious for malignancy, they have asymmetry, border irregularity, color variation, bleeding, or a non-healing ulcer. If the diagnosis cannot be made confidently, if the lesion does not resolve after standard therapy, and lastly, to address patient concerns. This concludes the APCO video on vulvar neoplasms. We have discussed how the risk factors relate to both HPV infection and chronic inflammatory processes and reviewed the symptoms and physical anatomy findings as well as the importance for having a low threshold for vulvar biopsy.